guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be sewing Danny Chu's yukata pattern. So from the research that I did, I realized that a yukata is like a summer kimono. Uh, as you can probably see by my skin tone, I am not Japanese. I also don't live in Japan and I don't know that much about the culture, except that I really love how everything looks. So I will just do a little disclaimer. I have never worn one of these before, so I don't know how these work, but I tried to follow the pattern as best as I could to come up with a final design. So I hope you enjoy the video and we'll just get started. So this is the pattern that it shows. And I actually have a really awesome fabric, as you can see here, that perfectly fits. It's just amazing how perfectly it fits. I was amazed. So I've had this fabric in my stash for quite a while, meaning to make a dress for myself. But when this pattern came out, I immediately knew this was the fabric I was gonna use. So I'm just trying to figure out which pattern pieces I wanna lay where and just marking that. So this is what we came up with. So I have to have the big yukata piece. It is huge, very long as well as the sleeve on the black. And then I have the collar and the belt on the white pieces. Um, the white pieces, that wasn't such a smart idea to do for the belts or like the OB, because I shall see later on, you don't actually see it. So after all of this, I did end up changing that one out to a different fabric, but I'll show you that later. And I'm just cutting this out with a rotary blade. This was actually a lot easier. I did try cutting some of the pieces first, but it was just a lot nicer to do it with this little rotary cutter. And it takes a lot of effort actually, because they are such long pieces, but here we go. So two of the front slash back pieces, two of the sleeves, and then the belt, the obi, and the collar. And I did have that extra blue piece. I thought about using that at some point, I didn't end up using it, so don't mind that piece. That is just gonna go in my stash again, because it is so nice. Cool. So we're gonna continue with the front and back piece. So the actual yukata piece, the body. And as you can see here, this is actually the little bottom bit. And we're gonna sew these two together. So this is the back seam. So it's the little narrow bit. The front seam is the wider bit and the back seam is the narrow bit. It is also marked on the pattern. So I'm going to pin this in place. Remember, right sides together. That's the important bit throughout the whole project. And just keep in mind to keep a little gap there for the stand that the pattern has indicated really beautifully. So keep to the pattern. Just before I was gonna sew this, I remembered that gap that I was talking about. So different table now. So I've just marked it with two pins and I'm gonna sew from one side and then do it on the other side. Find a matching thread and we can begin sewing. Now, if you're unsure where your seam allowance is supposed to be on your own sewing machine, so there's little lines there that you can follow. So like patterns usually say like seven millimeters or something. So here's a little tip. Just put your pattern down on it and line up where your needle will sit with a little line. So this was for me the easiest way that I can make sure that I do the correct seam allowance. And once you have done that and you're happy with where it is, it is time to start sewing. So as you saw before, I did use a blue thread and that is because I laid all the different colored threads on the fabric. So black, white, even pink, some blue and a darker blue, like this is a turquoisey blue. And from all the colors, I determined that this was actually the most beautiful because of the green that keeps coming back in the fabric. Uh, the white and the black were too harsh when it was on the other fabric. So the black too harsh on the white and the white too harsh on the black. And then this was actually just a really nice little accent color. So I decided to go with an accent color, which I don't often do, but that was actually a lot of fun. And as you saw me doing, I just skipped over the little gap. If you do forget to do that, uh, I would just go back 
uh, measure where it's supposed to be and unpick it and then just sew those little ends to avoid them from um, coming undone further. And once you have finished that piece, I just overlocked it and I give it a good press so the seam is open. And this is actually really important for that little seam there because then you can get the little gap for the stand to be perfectly centered or at least to lay nicely without having to find it every time. So now that we have that, it is time to continue with the sleeves. So I am actually gonna show you my process, but I do uh, recommend a slightly different, but for now, we're just gonna follow along with me. So I have decided to sew the sleeve on first. That's usually the way to do things. Although, little side note, I would recommend the hemming first, but in the later step that works too. Anyway, so I'm just marking the sewing ends because we don't actually need to sew all the way to the end. We're gonna leave that open for now. So it's just those little markings on the pattern. That is what we're gonna sew to the actual body. So here I am. This is the body of the yukata. I really hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, it is actually notched a little tiny bit so you can see it already. But if you can't see it or if you're unsure, you can always grab your pattern just to line it up. Because I did end up grabbing this pattern just to check and it was lined up all right. So I'm just pinning that in place, just keeping those same two pins in place. So I know where I need to sew till from that point to the other one. And then I'm just gonna pin in between there and we're gonna sew along that edge. And I'm just gonna repeat the same step on the other side, making sure they're lined up. And that is actually just satisfying seeing it come together. Pinning that in place and we're gonna sew just between those pins there on both sides. And there we go. I did go ahead and overlock just to keep it from fraying. And that is actually what we're with. So here you want to stop. Don't follow me just yet because you want to hem the sleeve first. But I'll get to that in just a second. And instead of listening to my future self, I'm being not very smart and actually just deciding to fold it and sew it like you would do any other. But I did leave the little gap there to make a cup. Forgetting that this is small size, doll size, which means I can't hem it once this is sewed. Anyway, you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So I'm just lining this up. You'll do this after you've hemmed it, but lining it up and I'm just gonna be sewing all the way around. So from the little corner there, all the way around the curve, back up. Oh, and you don't actually have to go up that high, so just do where you can. Okay, so I've determined something. So I've sewed around here, and this little bit that I showed before that we needed to do, yeah, do that first. Do it first, just honestly. The idea is you snip in here, and you do the same here. And now we just fold it up. And maybe if you want to, you can do like a little extra fold and then you just top stitch that in place. And then you fold that in half, the other way of course, and you sew all the way around. Much easier than this. So I think I'm gonna backtrack. I'm going to undo this and then I'm gonna do that little bit there. And that is indeed what I did. So I unpicked most, not quite all, but I unpicked most of it, giving me enough room to fold that over and sew it. And I've just top stitched that in place and then continued back around closing that up. So this is what it looks like. You can see my little green stitching, but it is not overwhelming or anything. And I'm just clipping into the curve and snipping off those little corners there just to make sure I can fold the sleeves, or not fold, but I can turn the sleeves back inside out and make sure they lay nice and flat when I turn them back inside out. And 
this is what the sleeve will look like, but you don't actually need to turn it inside out yet since we're gonna be doing a few more things with this still inside out. So there we go, it's back, right side in I guess. And we're gonna continue by sewing the sides. So I'm just gonna pin that in place and I'll show you in just a moment, but the pattern actually shows to leave a little gap here, just like we did for the back, but on one of the sides. And this is because we actually need to be able to thread a little thread <laughs> through that gap. And this is so that we can actually close the yukata properly. Uh, I do think I ended up doing this on the wrong side, but like I said, my knowledge is not very good. But it says on the left side, so I lined it up with the pattern and I chose the side that I thought it would be when it's turned the right sides out. Turns out I did this on the wrong side, the right side in this case, forgetting that it was supposed to be on the left side. So yeah, do this on the left side because at least then the little crossover is according, I'm pretty sure according to Google images at least, on the correct side. So yeah, as you can see, I'm just showing on that pattern, there's actually a little gap between the sleeve sewing end and the little slit end. So there's a little gap between the sleeve as well as the rest. So I'm just marking that so you don't actually need to sew that little bit. So it's just from that purple pin and then leaving the little gap and down to the rest. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Go nice and slow or fast if you really dare, but go nice and slow. And here I'm just leaving my little gap which I know because I put the pins on the other side just to help remind me, hey, this is on the wrong side. Oh, right, it's the gap. And then I can just continue all the way down without another worry. was behind the sewing machine and remembering I'm just doing a little tiny top stitch on both sides of the gap so in the center as well as that <coughs> left side so just a little stitch to keep the seam allowance in the middle separated and keeping it nice and flat so just like that there is my little gap and I do still need to take this to the press which I did do so just keep that a little bit flatter by stitching that in place. And there we go. I have pressed this with the iron like I mentioned before. The side seams are all sewn and our yukata is beginning to look like a yukata. At least in my opinion it is because I'm very excited about the whole thing. It is finally coming together, it's looking so nice, and I'm just very happy about this, since I've been wanting to make this for the longest time. Anyway, I'm just gonna continue now. I'm clipping into the sleeve, just that little bottom bit, just to release any of the extra tension when it's being turned inside out. And that is what we get to do now. Yes, we finally get to turn those sleeves inside out and get that nice and flat, and I also give this a little press with the iron, not too much on the top seam, but especially on the bottom there, since it's supposed to lay nice and flat. And that is what it looks like. And tell me this fabric is not perfect because, oh, I'm in love. Okay, now, where can I continue with hemming or like at least that side seam? So I have overlocked this end and now I'm just gonna fold it in once and twice. And I'm just going to be laying that little overlocked piece uh, that was left over, the thread, 
in the middle there and folding that in. And I'm just going to continue pinning this all the way down, doing that on both sides and now I can uh, top stitch this in place. Now clip off any of the extra threads and do that too if you haven't been doing that throughout the whole project, do it now because that just cleans it up. So I'm just cleaning up those threads that I mentioned and now it is time to continue once more. And here I'm just uh, preparing myself for the neckline and I kind of noticed that on the pattern it says that I have to cut a little notch. And I wasn't sure if that was supposed to be before or after. So after everything, and I did pin this in place once before, I decided to cut the notch in first, giving me a little bit more room uh, to do the neckline, to do that little collar piece. And I actually chose this for two reasons. The first one, like I mentioned, was because I already pinned this once and it didn't actually fit that nicely. And the second was that it would actually just be a little bit easier to sew around the curves because this way I can pull it straight or almost straight at least rather than having to lift the needle up as much to create that little square neck piece that is currently in there. So for those reasons I decided to clip it now. And I'm just continuing with the collar piece now that I keep mentioning and I folded that in half to mark the center and I'm just lining the center up with the center back seam, just to make sure I have enough on both sides. And once I've done that, I'm just gonna continue pinning along this edge. And as you get to the edge, we're gonna just fold that over twice to get a nice finished hem. And I really found that a little bit confusing with the pattern because it looked like it was just folded over once, but I had what I felt like a lot of space left over. So I folded it over twice just so it gives me a nice finished edge that I expected it to have. And I'm just gonna finish pinning that and I have sewed that in place. And yes, I did have to sew that little piece again, just to make sure that I sewed over that clip. So I'm just clipping back into those pieces and going along with seeing how that looks. So if you need to, you can clip in more places, but I actually found that it's like nice and smoothly. And as you can see, I did also overlock that edge. And now we're actually going to be sewing the other side down. And I do recommend overlocking this because it just gives it a little bit easier to work with and a nicer finish. And to finish this neckline, all I'm doing is folding it in once and then I'm gonna fold it over the previous seam a second time. So here I'm just figuring out how wide I need it to be. And once I'm happy with how it looks, I'm just gonna continue pinning that in place all the way around before top stitching that in place. And for the top stitching, I did do the stitch in the ditch, just because that gave it a really nice look, at least that's what I thought it would do. So this is it pinned, and we're going to be sewing in that little ditch there, and it does catch it. And this is what it looks like if you do the stitch in the ditch. So it catches it on the back, and it's just beside where the seam has been folded over. So if you want your seam to be more obvious, you can do like a top stitching, but this actually gave it a nice subtle look, which I really liked. 
And now we just get to do the final steps, which is number one is getting a little ribbon of sorts to go through uh, through the neckline. So this is the only ribbon that was decently thin. Uh, yeah, I really wanted to have like an actual ribbon that was a lot thinner, but I didn't have any of that. I just had this narrow twill type. So I just went with it and it actually works out decent. So I'm just doing a three-fold seam, just like that little pattern piece instruction says. And I am gonna warn you, like it says tape up 21 centimeters, and I was really confused by that. At first I thought they meant just 21 centimeters in total, but yeah, if you, as you can guess, that is too short. So I just took a random piece that I measured roughly the collar plus 21 centimeters, but it was just, just something slightly longer. And this actually worked out pretty well. So it was roughly that collar plus 21 centimeters. And I'm just using a safety pin to thread it through. So it was a little bit hard since my uh, ribbon wasn't as thin as I wanted it to be. And I hadn't anticipated on this thickness for the little collar piece. But I managed to get it through and this is what we have. So it's just sticking out slightly on both sides. Now we're going to finish off by doing the hem. And I was actually a bit confused because one side is longer than the back side, so the front. And I don't actually know what the reason is behind this. If I should have just folded the front over more or uh, something, like there wasn't a lining included or anything. So in the end, I just decided to do a double fold just like I do for most of my hemming. And I just did the front wider than the back. So just kind of tailored that down slightly. It was the only solution that I could come up with. I'd already pinned this like four times and I decided that this actually looks the best. So that is what I ended up going with. And once I've pinned this in place, I'm going to be top stitching this. So I did decide to top stitch this from the top there. Okay, we're gonna continue with the belt or the OB. So the first thing is first, we're gonna hem the edges. So I'm gonna do this by overlocking both edges and then we're gonna be folding this over just as much as the pattern says, just a seam allowance there. And this is what I've got. So I've overlocked it and I've gone with the iron to press it down, just like the pattern there. And you can use your pattern to um, measure it out if you want to. Anyway, once you've done that, it's just a single fold over, by the way. Um, no, you're just gonna pin it in place along the long edge. So going all the way down, and then you're gonna be sewing this along the long edge only. And we're gonna just sew along that edge. And I have also gone ahead and overlocked it. So now it's time to turn it inside out. And I'm just using a loop turner to help me out. And uh, yeah, my loop turner is a little bit broken, so I have to be careful with turning it inside out that I don't keep catching the loop there, or like the little hook at least. But I make it work, as always, because I don't want to buy another one. Anyway, it is just turning that inside out, working itself over, and that is actually it for the belt. Once it's done, you just want to give it a good press with the iron and get it nice and crisp. Here you go. I've already called it several times. There we go. And now you just get to dress up your smart doll. So Izzy is very excited to get her new yukata on and I'm very excited to see it on her. So I'm just putting her hands back to get it over the sleeves there and it is time to get her fully dressed. So I was watching a little YouTube tutorial, <laughs> yep, on how to tie the yukata or especially the obi because I wanted to do it mostly properly. I still wing it a bit because like I mentioned, I am not an expert. And yes, it was at this point that I kind of realized that I did have it the wrong way since the folded over should have been on the other side but I didn't change it, so it is still like this. 
And I'm sorry if this is any cultural reason that I did that wrong. Uh, yeah, please don't hate me. So here I'm just tying the belt and I realized from the tutorial that I was not gonna turn it to the back. So I just figured I might as well tie it in the back to start with. And yeah, following anything is always harder than just doing it. But I make, I'm, I actually made it work. So I'm hiding all the little extra pieces in the back there and I'm making it into a little bow. Oh man, that is difficult. I have to say, I was really struggling making this bow, but we got there eventually. There is a lot of going back and forth, as you can already tell, but I managed to make it into a bow and make it look nice. So that's it. But you may already be able to tell this little obi isn't actually going to make the final cut since it is busy on busy. And the white is not enough contrast co with the black, so you don't actually see it. Anyway, here I'm finally finishing up the bow and I'm just tucking the loose ends behind it uh, as my little tutorial was telling me to do. And just fluffing up the little bow and that is it. She is done and we get to do a photo shoot now. So I was really liking the belt at this point. The obi looks so beautiful and I was happy with it. But as soon as I put her a little bit further away and I took a photo, yeah. Spot the obi. Who can find it? Ha ha ha. Yeah, so even with a close-up, it was I just couldn't tell the difference where the belt was and where the dress is. So I changed it up and I looked in my fabric stash and I found some scrap fabric. And this is what I ended up with. So I'm actually very happy. This contrast actually made it look really nice. This was a fabric that I had tea dyed previously, so it was like an off-white, which actually works out really well with the rest of the outfit since it's not a stark white. And the belt is actually looking really nice like this. So the total outfit, I am so happy with how it turned out and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, maybe give it a like and comment down below on any ideas or questions you have, I am happy to answer those. And because I was actually really enjoying this project, I couldn't help myself and I made a little umbrella parasol kind of thing. So I took a lot of inspiration from the Japanese parasol. Um, and this is what I ended up with. It is nothing beautiful, but it was actually a lot of fun and I did try to make it look as neat as possible. And it actually turned out really nicely and I was very happy with that. And just a little yellow background gave it a lot of shine actually. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps my channel out and I'll see you all the next time.